Um, first one, bubblegum. Create a new layer. Pick a nice bubblegum pink. Or if you want your bubblegum to be neon green, go ahead and pick a neon green. Just pick whatever color you want bubblegum to be. Now pick a hard brush that will cover the mouth or lips entirely. So they're going about blowing a bubble, they're probably not gonna be smiling. Just kind of center it. You can always move it later since we put it on, on a new layer. Double click the layer. Go to gradient overlay. Make sure it's black and white. Push reverse. I know it doesn't do anything right now, but it will in a second. Do radial and take this and just move that white around. So it's pretty visible, but it's towards one of the top corners, or the very top. You could do it in the middle too if you want, the bottom, all depending where your light source is. I'm going to do the top right corner in soft light or overlay. I'm going to choose soft light. And you can even you know, choose drop shadow. Oops, I didn't mean to adjust that. You know, add a little depth to your bubble gum or outer glow. Set to nor normal or multiply or something with black and make the size smaller. Give your bubble gum some depth. And there you go, bubble gum. You can move this around too now. If you didn't like the spacing of it. If you want a bigger edit free transform, hold down the shift key and pull a little corner and you make double click in the middle. You can make one big bubble. <laughs> Alright, and then for a vintage effect, I've been asked about that before. Image adjustments photo filter. And then you just mess around little sliders. I would first image adjustments hue saturation down the saturation a bit, maybe about mm, I'm gonna go for minus fifty right now. And then image adjustments photo filter crank up the density and you can see how it can look really vintage. I mean as vintage as you're gonna get for an anime picture. You can even do cooling filters, different colors, just plain old colors. Depending on what you want. Um, let's see, let me go back. There we go. Uh, the mirrored look, all you need to do is get out the crop tool, outline the saw. See, there are different ways to do the same method, but I find this one faster. Um, then you can just copy the picture layer and drag the over. I'm gonna drag this one here, this one here. Edit, transform, rot uh, flip horizontally. And then you can see how it has that like mirror image thing going on. Even the text is backwards and everything. Um Another thing I've noticed people are doing is image adjustments. Uh, desaturate one of them, and you put this one on the bottom, and just slide this one under it so only part of it's showing, and then crop to your liking. Double click the top layer, you know, use stroke, you know, to get a nice line. You can even do um, you know, pattern overlays. You know, everything's gonna um, do the one. So you can like put scan lines, which is a pattern. On this one, you know, set it to soft light, and they'll immediately have a difference between the two. That's. Yet yeah, another effect I noticed people using. Um, another one is this weird 
glow thing, I'll use the pink. Just use a big fluffy brush and click where you want the pink or whatever color you're using. And then lighten or screen. You know, you can put them different places. Um, there's notice people doing little um, flecks of like, flare. It looks like just go over. Oh, there we go. Into your brush things, pick out the size you want. I'm gonna make mine kind of big. Thirty-eight, forty, yeah. And then mess with all of these. Um, spacing, spacing up, hardness. You know, softer, harder. Scatter them a bit. There's one in around here that is. Oop. I don't want dual brush. No color dynamics. It's in here somewhere. I know it is. Here we go. Opacity jitter. There we go. off just mess with them depending on what you want it'll have a little window here um, where you can be like oh you know what's this mean right I'm just gonna put this on fade and you have flow jitter as well then go back to your tablet with a new layer and just kinda you can see how they pop up. And you can do this with any brush. If you say you have this, um, here's a weird little triangle brush. If you just go up here into scattering, into other dynamics, opacity jitter. You leave it off, only parts of them will fade. And just go, you know, up the size. It's not going up. There we go. Now you got like random chunks of. So you can see how that could be possibly useful. Last thing I'm going to show you is lens flare. Make a new layer. Edit. Fill. 50% gray. Um, use its drop down menu. Put this on hard light. You'll notice it doesn't do anything. Filter, render. There it is. Lens flare. Now you just pick where you want it. I'm going to have it like way over here in the top corner. You can choose different lens types, different brightnesses. Press OK. And the nice thing about this is, oh, I missed where I wanted it. You know, just drag and drop. Um, it'll be trouble if you want to color. You can actually download lens flare br brushes. I have some. Yeah. See, so you can put those more directly where you want. You can even put those on a layer on their own. Image adjustments, use saturation, colorize. And you can color them too. Alright, I think that I covered every thing that people have mentioned so if you would like an effect shown a tutorial version of it um, just leave me a comment or a message or whatever um, if you could give me an example picture of what you want so I can more accurately give you what you're looking for alright